Today we're going to make a quick social media animation for your Twitch streams and I'm going to show you how to make it repeat using stream elements and OBS. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So today, we're gonna be making a quick little social media animation, or just a quick little, don't forget to subscribe to YouTube animation. I'm gonna show you how to take it and put it inside of stream elements so that it will repeat on your Twitch stream. A lot of people ask me when they create like a social media graphic or something that says like, don't forget to subscribe. They wanna know how to make it repeat with a certain delay in between. Not just hitting the loop checkbox inside of OBS where it just plays right when it's done. You wanna have a little bit of delay delay to maybe play like every 30 seconds or every minute and I'm going to show you how to do that inside of stream elements but first we have to create something inside of After Effects to make loop but before we do I just want to announce that I am going to be doing a Q&A video here soon on this channel there's a link in the description of this video and in the pinned comment on this video that'll send you to a Google form where you can fill out a question and I might answer it on a video so if you want to be a part of that make sure you do that I'll answer pretty much anything you ask me personal or related to After Effects streaming content creation anything so jump down there ask me some questions I want to get a ton of them and then we'll make a video on this channel but let's go ahead and dive into After Effects and make a quick little animation that we can bring in as stream elements and loop it all right guys so here we are inside of After Effects I've just created a new composition and all I have here is just a YouTube logo imported in that we're going to be using for this animation so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here to our shapes and we're going to draw a really nice rounded rectangle shape just kind of like and let's do a box like that shape right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and craft what we want our end look to look like. So we're going to take the YouTube logo. We're going to bring it in, maybe scale it down just like that. Hold shift so we can move it in a straight line, move it way over there just like that. Cool. And then let's grab some text, grab the text tool, type out like don't. That's a huge text. Forget to subscribe. So this is what we want our finished graphic to look like. So now it's time to animate. So we're first going to grab our white rectangle here. We're going to drop down and we're going to go ahead and keyframe our scale by hitting the little stopwatch. And let's go ahead and move back to the beginning. And what we actually want to do is we want to de-check this little box right here to make sure we're not uniform scaling. And then we can go ahead and scale it this way. Or in our case, we can scale it just this way. And we're going to scale it down. Actually, let's make it into a bit of a shape like that first and move this to here. And then let's move it all the way down to zero. And I'll show you why. So we're going to go whoop. And we're going to go ahead and copy this keyframe here and paste it there. So now if we play it, you'll see it stops when it gets to like a square and then keeps going. And now what we want to do is we want to select all these and make sure we add our keyframe assistant, easy ease. And now it looks like whoop, whoop, a little bit better, but we want to make sure we select these and go into our speed graph. And we want to edit our speed graph a little bit. So let's do that and let's do that. And let's see how that looks now. Um, eh. Let's go ahead and make this last a little bit longer. There we go. So it goes whoop, bang, whoop, bang. Cool. And on that first little whoop, when it goes to this, that's when we want our YouTube logo to pop out. So we want our YouTube logo to get to its final state right here. So let's go ahead and grab our YouTube logo, keyframe the position and scale, move it back to about here. And then we're going to move the YouTube logo into the center. We can actually use our align tools to do that. And there we go. So we've got the YouTube logo in the center. So now it's going to move to the side with this, but we need to actually add our easy ease to it. So right click easy ease. And then let's add this shape that we did to the other one, just like that. So the YouTube logo should stay inside like that. So it goes with it just like that and now we want the YouTube logo to scale in from this point right here so what we want to do is add a keyframe to our scale on the YouTube logo and then at the beginning we want it to be zero just like that and we actually don't want it to happen right away so let's move it in like this maybe add our easy ease to it whoops select both of those add our keyframe assistant easy ease add like this shape to the graph just like that and now let's see how this looks Nice. Now we want the don't forget to subscribe to come in. So the way we want that to come in is right about here. We want it to slide in. So we're going to go to the end once again, just like that. And we're going to keyframe the position on our don't forget to subscribe text. So let's keyframe the position. We're going to come back to right about here. And we want to move the don't forget to subscribe all the way this way. And now it's going to look like this. So now we need to cover up the text before it comes out from behind this subscribe button. So we're going to move it below the subscribe button, below the YouTube logo. And now we need to do a little bit of work with track mats. So what we're going to do with track mats, we're going to create a new solid. 
it can be any color you want. I'm just going to go with the green just like that. We're going to move it right about here and we're going to go ahead and put it in between the YouTube logo and this right above our text. And we're going to set the track mat of our text to alpha mat inverted. So now anything behind that green on the text layer is going to disappear. So let's play this now. So once you've got your animation looking good, now we need to make sure it animates out. It animates in, now we need to animate out. And I'm gonna show you a really cool way to do that. So what we can do is select everything and just pre-compose it all into one layer, hit okay. So here we go, we've got our animation. And once our animation plays in for a little bit, you can give it a little bit of time, maybe like two seconds, Go ahead and hold down Control shift d to delete it or to split it in half and then delete the end. We can then duplicate our layer and on this top one we can right click, go up to time and hit time reverse layer so it's going to play it backwards. And then if you move this to the end just like this to where it pops in right when your other one ends, we can now play it in a loop and you'll see it now will play in reverse. So once it comes in, it'll stay for a minute, don't forget to subscribe, and then it animates out. So then we've got it looping and that is all you need to add it to your Twitch stream we could maybe make it a little bit longer by extending this out just like that let's go ahead and play it to make sure it looks good goes plays in and then it plays out nice that looks really cool and when you're done creating this how you want to export it is you want to export it as a webm so the way you export as webm in the adobe programs is by installing a plugin i'll try to leave a link to the plugin down in the description it might be a little difficult but you can easily search youtube for like adobe premiere pro webm plugin or adobe after effects webm plugin and there's so many videos showing you how to install the plugin it is very simple i might do a video on it here in the future so whenever you're ready to export and have the plugin installed it's a little little bit different as when you're exporting directly out of After Effects. What you're going to do is you're going to go up to Composition and instead of clicking Add to Render Queue, you want to click to Add to Adobe Media Encoder. And once you click that, it is going to open up Adobe Media Encoder. So once it opens up Adobe Media Encoder, it should do it automatically once you click Add to Media Encoder. It's going to open it up here and you just want to click where it has the format in blue right here. And it's going to go ahead and open up this Export Settings window where you can go to Format. And instead of H.264, we can go down and we can select WebM. This will be here once you install the plugin. You can leave it how it is once you click that. All you need to do is scroll down in the video settings here and make sure you click on this checkbox here, Include Alpha Channel. That's going to make it to where you can put it over stuff and it won't have a black background. After that, where it says output name right here, comp one, you can click on that in blue and that's where you name it, whatever you want, save it wherever you want, hit okay down here. And then you just want to hit this little green play button up here in the top corner. And it's going to start your render. And once it's done, you've got a WebM that you can put inside of stream elements. And I'm going to quickly show you how you can do that with a delay. So here we are inside of stream elements. I'm going to quickly create a blank overlay and we can create it in the 1080p re overlay resolution that they recommend. Hit start and now it is time to add your animation. So we're going to click on add widget here and we're going to come down to where it says static slash custom and we want to add an asset rotator slash slideshow. Go ahead and click that and right here where it says add asset, you want to click there and this is where you want to upload the WebM that you just created. So if we switch over here to video, you can go up here to the upload and find it on your machine. I've got a couple here that I've already created. I've got a Twitter one and a YouTube one. Yours will pop up here once you create it and upload it. You want to hit submit on it up here. And there we go. We've got it playing inside of this here box. So if you want to add a delay to it, you can go over here to the second one here that says iteration pause. And if you want to go and hit 10 on there, you'll see that as your don't forget to subscribe plays, you're going to go ahead and watch it just kind of animate out here in a second. I've got this one lasting a little while and there it is. It animates out and it's going to wait now 10 seconds and it's just going to be blank. And then you'll see after 10 seconds, if we did this right, and any second now, there it is again, it plays again. So it's super easy and built into stream elements, how you can make something repeat. And you can make this repeat as long as you want. You can make it repeat for 60 seconds. So that'd be every minute. That would probably be a pretty good one, 30 seconds to 60 seconds if this were on like your just chatting screen. From there, you can save it out and name it whatever you want and you'll get the browser source link. You just take that browser source link, plug it into OBS as a browser source and bam, you can move it wherever you want on your stream. And you've got a rotating asset that you custom animated really quickly and set of After Effects built in to your Twitch stream. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy creating these assets for your Twitch stream. It is really easy. It took minutes to create that YouTube one, and you could take that YouTube logo, and you could swap it out with a Twitter logo and change it from subscribe to follow. And in this side of this asset rotator, you can add multiple assets to where to rotate between a YouTube one, a Twitter one, an Instagram one, a TikTok one, whatever you want. It can just rotate through them, and you can have a delay between each one all set up here inside of Stream Elements, all inside of one browser source that you can bring in inside of your Twitch stream. But 
like I said in the beginning of the video, I am doing a Q&A here on this channel, so make sure you jump into the description and fill out the form in there or the pinned comment. Same link in the pinned comment down below. You can fill out that form with any question you want, and maybe I'll answer it here on a future video. But I once again hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.